all the fry gone. In hindsight, that was a mistake. So what happened last month, she was actually being aggressive towards the fry that were in their cram. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be doing my August 2021 fish room update tour. But before we get into the video, I just remind you guys that I am on Instagram now. So if you want more than one update a week on what's happening in the fish room and sneak peeks up to upcoming videos, be sure to follow me on Instagram because I am posting there more than once a week. Anyway guys, onto this week's video. So the first tank getting an update this month is this one and it is my Neo Lamprologus Lay Loopy tank. These guys are also known as lemon cichlids in the aquarium hobby and are one of the most popular cichlids from Lake Tanganyika, one of the most colorful cichlids. As you can see, these guys are almost bright orange and I love them. Uh, if you've been on my channel for a while now, you would know that I feature this tank quite heavily on my channel and it is just because it's a really interesting tank to watch and there's always something happening in it. Now, if you compare the way this tank looks right now to the July 2020 Fish Room Update Tour, uh, you will notice it's quite different and that's that, that difference is uh, all the fry are gone. Uh, I had over 150 to 200 fry in this tank and I've moved them out into their grow out tank. And I actually did that a little bit too late. So what happened last month, uh, the female, you can see her on the right there, male's in the center. Uh, she was really ripe, uh, really massive belly, full of eggs. And these guys had spawned. And from my past experience with this pair, uh, the female chasing the f older generations of fry away from the new batch, I kept the older generation of fry in the tank with the new spawn. Big mistake, for some reason this time the female wasn't chasing the f her older generation of fry away from the new spawn and the fry I had in this tank were only about three weeks old and I noticed them eating the wiggling fry, the newly hatched Leilupi fry I had about 150 uh, three week old fry in here and they were feasting on the newborns. I was devastated. Uh, I learnt my lesson the hard way, unfortunately, with that one. And uh, I started catching the three week old fry out of the tank, uh, but it was too little too late. I couldn't catch them all without removing all the rock work, potentially disturbing the current spawn that was in there and breaking the, the pair's bond. In the past, when my Leilupi have spawned, when I had them in the quarantine tank when they were spawning, I raised about two to three generations of fry in the one tank. The female, she would chase the older generations of fry away from her current brood. But for this brood, for some reason, she wasn't doing that. I don't know why uh, she wasn't uh, chasing the fry away from, the, from her new brood. Maybe she wasn't chasing them away because the older generation of fry were only three weeks old. They were still babies. Uh, they had spawned in such quick succession, maybe she wasn't recognizing the older generation of fry as a threat to her newest spawn, and that's why she wasn't chasing them away. So it was very painstaking to catch them. It almost took me three to four days to catch all the fry, and by that time, they had decimated the brand new spawn. There is one fry still in this tank, actually, and uh, it's a real tough one to catch. It's very smart, clings to the rock work. Uh, I'm really gonna have to get it out. And as you can see on this video, the female is really courting with the male. She's shimmering her body whenever the male approaches. She tries to go into the cage, tries to get the male to follow her in. So she's ready to spawn again. Uh, and in actual fact, she isn't as ripe as she was last month. Even though she's showing signs of spawning already, she was a lot bigger than she is right now. As you can see their behavior, the shimmering bodies, they come into contact with each other. It's actually quite cute to watch uh, fish behave in this way. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that next spawn. I've learnt my lesson the hard way, unfortunately. But like I said, in the, the previous generation of fry that I had raised in the other tank, the quarantine tank, they were fine. The female would defend her youngest brood against the older generations of fry, and I was able to successfully raise two to three generations of fry in the one tank. On this occasion, she failed to protect her uh, new batch of fry. Anyway, guys, on to the next tank. So guys, if you saw last week's video, you would know that this tank is now the home of my most surprising spawn in the fish room, my newly hatched Alto Lamprologus calvus. They're black calvus. Never spawned them before. I spawned them about uh, just over two weeks ago now, and they are doing pretty well in this tank. Now, in hindsight, I probably should have moved the female out of this tank with the shell into a grow out tank in the top row and let her raise the fry up there. And I didn't do that because she was just protecting that shell and the area so well 
I thought I'd let her be in peace in this aquarium and look after a fry in here without stressing her out moving into another aquarium. In hindsight, that was a mistake because now I've got, I don't know how many fry in here, probably just under a hundred fry in this aquarium. They're very, very hard to see, very camouflaged against the pool filter sand. And I've got four adult black calvers in her one foot by two foot tank. So not the ideal situation to be in. Should have done the opposite. But it was an experiment. I wanted to see how the female would go with the fry in this tank. And as you can see, the female isn't in this tank. So what happened around five to six days after I moved the other three calvers out of this aquarium, I noticed the female, she was still acting very, very aggressive towards me, hovering around the shell you can see on the left there. And the other thing I was noticing, she was actually being aggressive towards the fry that were in the aquarium. Her instinct was so strong to protect that area around the shell that she began to attack her own fry. And this was around the five to six day mark of her being in the aquarium by herself with her fry. When I saw that, I immediately pulled her out of the tank, put her with the other three black calvers in uh, the top row of tanks where I normally grow fry out and I've left the fry in here. Now what I'm gonna have to do is do a swap. I'm gonna have to catch these fry out and put them in the grow out tank that the actual adult black calvers are currently in. And I'm actually holding off from doing that for now because I've just moved almost 200 Leilubi fry out of an aquarium and I really don't wanna catch more fry. Uh, and this job is gonna be a whole lot harder because I don't have anywhere else to put the adult black calvers in the interim while I'm catching these fry out of here. So I'm gonna have to do a bit of a juggling act and uh, get that done. Here you can see them feeding on baby brine shrimp, you see them moving into the water column. And at the moment I've got them in here with two albino bristlenose catfish. They happen to be both male bristlenose catfish. Uh, I don't like keeping bristlenose catfish in with young calvus fry because the bristlenose catfish can stress the calvus fry out, uh, especially at night when the bristlenose catfish they feed, they're nocturnal, they like to feed at night, so they'll be harassing the fry, the calvus fry, while the calvus fry are trying to sleep. So I really recommend you do not put bristlenose catfish in with very young fry, because they will disturb the calvus fry. So guys, this is the Neolamprologus Leilupi fry. This is the batch that absolutely decimated my newer spawn of Leilupi fry, unfortunately. Uh, I'm not great with uh, trying to estimate quantities of fish. However, I do think there's probably about 150 to 200 fry in this aquarium. Uh, this is gonna be their grow out aquarium for the next few months. You can see these guys here, they're about four to five weeks old here, I believe. And some of them are just starting to approach the one centimeter size. I uh, don't think I've lost any, it's pretty much impossible to tell. Uh, without noticing it really, you're just going to notice a decline in numbers uh, if you're losing fry with uh, the quantity that are in this tank. And they're so small you really wouldn't notice it anyway. Uh, there are some bristlenose catfish in this aquarium. Unlike the calvus, the Leilupi fry I find are a lot, whole lot hardier than the calvus fry. And the benefit of that is that I can keep bristlenose catfish with these fry and they'll keep the aquarium nice and clean for me. Uh, you can see I have a bare bottom aquarium uh, for the Leilupi fry. They don't sit on the sand bed like uh, the Calvus fry like to do. Uh, these guys are pretty much free swimming from around the one week stage, so uh, a lot easier to raise. And next to those guys are the older brothers and sisters. Some of these guys are born in early January 2021, and uh, some are born around the late February mark. Uh, I'm not sure how many are in this aquarium. There is approximately two to three generations of fry in here. And you can see they're getting their beautiful yellow coloration that Le Lupi are known for. The largest ones are probably just pushing over one inch, maybe about four, four-ish centimeters. Uh, some of the smaller ones are about 1.5 centimeters. And you can see in this aquarium, I've got some PVC pipe uh, for the guys just to have some shelter in the, in the aquarium. Don't have many rocks, I've only got one rock right at the back of the aquarium and that's purely just to hold the uh, sponge filter in place, prevent it from floating up because the suction cups on those are quite poor quality suction cups. There are some bristlenose catfish in this aquarium to keep the algae at bay as well. Quite a hardy fish, quite easy to look after. And yeah, if you guys want to splash a color in your aquarium, I really highly recommend that you get some Neolamprologus leilupi in your tanks. Stunning fish for a freshwater aquarium. 
uh, can rival marine aquarium quality fish. So firstly, I just want to say sorry for the poor quality of footage on this aquarium. Uh, this is my sixth generation of white Alto Lamprolagus calvus fry. Um, doing a bit of an experiment with them and not turning the main tank light on on this tank. Uh, and there's a couple of reasons for it. Firstly, part of the experiment is I want to see how the calvus fry do without getting shocked every single time I turn the light on or off on their aquarium. So they're about six weeks old here and I honestly haven't noticed any die off. The numbers have remained uh, pretty much around the 60 fry mark, or I believe so. Uh, that's the approximate amount I caught out of the parents tank and they're doing really well. This is the best probably uh, success rate I've had so far with Alto Lamprologus calvus fry. I haven't turned the lights on this aquarium at all. I'm using the ambient light of the fish room. That is more than enough for these guys to see food that I put into the aquarium, uh, which is live microworms and baby brine shrimp. I turn the flow off the, on the aquarium when I'm feeding them so they don't have to struggle in the water column to get to the food. And it seems to be really, really working not having a light on this aquarium. The other reason I'm not turning the light on this fish tank is the LED unit on this uh, section of tanks has started to fail. Uh, it does sometimes work, but it flickers. And there's nothing worse than having a flickering light on an aquarium to scare your fish, especially calvus fry that aren't as hardy as a lot of other species of fish that I've spawned. So I've just left it off. Uh, that's kind of been a blessing for me. In, uh, I wasn't ever going to attempt to not have an aquarium light on this tank. So uh, having the light uh, fail for me, having that unit fail for me, has actually, I think, I believe, increased the survival rate of these calvus fry. The other thing with this aquarium is, like I said previously, I don't have bristlenose catfish in this aquarium to clean up the algae. Uh, I didn't want to have the bristlenose catfish in this aquarium because they are nocturnal. They will disturb the calvus fry from being able to sleep. Uh, and because the calvus fry sit on the sand bed for so long, as well as bristlenose catfish, they sit on the sand bed obviously, so that it's competing territory. Uh, the bristlenose catfish would d disturb the calvus fry a lot and stress them out, uh, chasing them around uh, on the sand bed. So I haven't put bristlenose catfish in here for that reason. The other reason, there's no algae in these aquariums because the light is off. So there would be, not be any algae growth on the sand bed or the glass. So there's no need for me to have bristlenose catfish in this aquarium at all. So two reasons there not to put the bristlenose catfish in there. And I believe this is the most successful uh, calvus spawn I've had to date. If you want to try those, the uh, Alto Lamprologus calvus or Alto Lamprologus compressorceps, I highly recommend you watch my previous attempts at trying to spawn and raise these fry. As I said, I've, this is my sixth batch and I feel like I've got a lot of experience now raising these guys. And again, this is the most successful batch I've ever had. So if you watch my other videos with the things that I've tried, the things that I've learned, I'm sure you guys will be able to cut some corners there and uh, get the most successful spawning happening from your first spawn rather than trying what I've, <laughs> my trial and error approach. So um, yeah, I highly recommend you watch those videos uh, before you try spawning these beautiful fish. So again, apologies for the poor ca camera quality here. Uh, bumped up the ISO on the camera just so you can see the fry and I really, really don't want to disturb them um, with and putting the, putting the light on the aquarium and stressing them out and then losing this spatch. So hope you guys appreciate that. Apologies for the reflection of the camera as well. So there you have it guys, my August 2021 Fish Room Update Tour. Really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment and subscribe buttons. I really would appreciate it. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.